Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is one of those very long problems again, something that there's no way you can solve this in three minutes. It deals with electric field and potential. So let's read the problem. It says, in the figure, the inner region A represents a sphere of radius Ra equals 1, within, the within which the electrostatic charge density varies with the radial distance R from the center as the density equals k times r, where k is a positive number. In the spherical shell B of outer radius r sub b, the electrostatic charge density varies as density equals 2k over r. Assume that dimensions are taken, taken care of, all physical quantities are in their SI units, which of the following statement or statements are correct? So they gave us four statements, and any one of the four can be correct upwards to maybe all four. Now one thing we need to be careful of is that here they're talking about the electric field, here they talk about the electric potential, here they take, talk about the total charge, and here the magnitude of the electric field. So we need to be careful what we're dealing with here. And notice we have a sphere that has a density of charge that increases with increasing radius, so zero charge at the center and then increasing as you get to the outside of that uh, sphere. And then for sphere or the shell B, notice that the answers contain different values for R sub B, four different values. Now, based on the density of, uh, of what's in the spherical shell B, it also looks like it's positive charge. So when I look at answer A, it says if R sub B equals the square root of 3 over 2, uh, then, I guess there should be an N here, then the electric field equals zero outside B. Now, obviously, there can only be a zero electric field outside B if the total charge adds up to zero. But since the charge in A is positive and the charge in B is positive, the total charge can never be zero, so therefore the electric field outside B cannot be zero. So right away, you can say that A is not correct. What about B, C, and D? Well, the next thing we need to do is figure out how much charge there is in an A, and then we may need to find out how much charge there is in B, and do that separately for three different radii. So let's first find the charge inside A, and of course to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have a small little shell, spherical shell inside with thickness dr, distance from the center as r, and so we can say that dv of that shell, let me write it here, dv of that shell is equal to the surface area of that little shell, which is 4 pi r squared, times the thickness, which is dr. So that's the volume of one of those little spherical shells. And then to find the charge, the charge, that would be equal to the density times uh, the volume, but in this case, the small amount of charge within that will be equal to the density times dv, and of course the density is k times r, so that would be dq is equal to k times r times dv, which is 4 pi r squared dr, and so this would be equal to 4 pi k r cubed dr. And so that would be the charge inside A, inside a little spherical shell inside A. So now we can find the charge in the entire sphere. So now we can say that Q in A is equal to the integral of all the little dQs, which is equal to the integral of that, which is 4 pi K times the integral of R cubed dr over, oh, not over anything yet because we haven't integrated it yet, R cubed dr from r equals 0 to r equal r sub a. And r sub a is 1, so we can replace that by 1. So at that point we have this is equal to 4 pi k r to the fourth over 4, so that cancels out, evaluated from 0 to 1. Plug in 0 you get nothing, plug in 1 you get 1, and so it tends to to be equal to pi times k. So that is the charge in a. So Q inside A is equal to pi times K. All right, so now we need to find charge in B for the very other three configurations, I believe. That's what we need to do. 
And uh, so let's start with the next one here for B, for part B. So we could say that Q in B is equal to, um, well, it would be the same thing again. It would be, uh, let's see here, DQ would be rho dV, right? So let's first recalculate our small little charge element because it's going to be different because the density for B is different than the density for A. So we can say that DQ is equal to uh, the density of B times dV. Now dV remains the same because we still take a spherical shell, but this will be different. So dQ is equal to 2k over r times dV, and dV is 4 pi r squared dr. 4 pi r squared dr. So that means that dQ is equal to one of the r's cancels out, and we end up with 8 pi k r dr. So now we're ready to integrate that because now we can say that q in part b is equal to the integral. And let me leave some room because we want to pull some constants out. So we do want to pull out 8, 8 pi k, those are constants, times the integral of r dr going from r equals 1, which is the radius a, to 3 halves. 1.5 or 3 halves. All right. So this is equal to 8 pi k r squared over 2 evaluated from 1 to 3 halves. So the 2 and the 8 cancel to 1 and 4. So that is equal to q sub b is equal to 4 pi k times, plug in the upper limit, I get 9 over 4, plug in the lower limit, I get 1, which is 4 over 4, so that gives me 5 over 4, and the force will cancel out, so this gives me 5 pi k. So that is the charge in B if the radius is 3 over 2. So then we want to combine the two, so that means Q total is equal to QA plus QB, now, for QA, we got pi k. For QB, we got 5 pi k. Add them together, we get 6 pi k. All right, so that's the total charge inside both A and B combined. Now, what would be the electrical potential just outside B? Hmm? Is it k over epsilon sub naught? Well, we know that the potential V is equal to k times Q over r. And k, of course, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so there would be 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. q is 6 pi k. And the radius, well, the radius would be 3 over 2. 3 over 2, so the 2 goes to the top. There we go. So notice we have 12 in the numerator, 12 in the denominator, so that all cancels out. We have pi and pi, that leaves us with k over epsilon sub naught. So, in our calculation, that's the potential just outside sphere B, and does that match what we have here? And the answer is yes, it does. And so therefore, we can say that B is one of the answers. You can see why this takes more than three minutes to do. All right, now let's say that radius B is two. That what is the total charge? Now we've already completed the integration, it's right here. So now what we need to do, of course, is we need to evaluate QB when the radius is 2. So for part C, QB is equal to question mark. And so now what we do is that's equal to 4 pi k times r squared evaluated at 2. That would be r squared. That would be uh, 4 minus evaluate at 1, which is 1. So that would be 12 pi k. And is 12 pi k what they're looking for? No, they're looking for 15 pi k. So we realize that that is not the right answer. So again, what I quickly did was, we know that when we integrate this, we end up with um, 4 pi k r squared evaluated from 1 to 3 halves for part b, but from 1 to 2 for part c. So we end up with 8 pi k, 
uh, I'm sorry, 4 pi k times r squared evaluated from 1 to 2. So r squared when it's 2, that's 4, minus r squared when it's 1, that's 1. So we get 12 pi k, not the right answer. And now finally, find then, oh, keep forgetting my ends here, then the magnitude of the electric field is 13 pi k over epsilon sub naught, just outside beep. Again, we need to find the entire charge, and now we have the limits of 5 over 2. So that means for part D, we need to find Q, did I say QB here? I meant QC, and this is QD. And so for QD, that would be equal to 4 pi k times r squared evaluated at the upper limit, which is 5 over 2, which is 25 over 4, minus the, in, the inner radius, which is the radius of a, which is 1, and that's, so we get that. That would be 4 over 4, which is 21 over 4. The 4s cancel out, so this is equal to 21 pi k. So q for part o. It is b, of course. Here I go. I forgot what I was doing. B sub simply says it's the charge in, sp in uh, the spherical shell B. We're doing part C here, we're doing part D here, but I should not write B there, uh, D there, I should write B because we're dealing with the charge inside the spherical shell. All right, so that's 21 pi k, and so when we add that to the 1 pi k for QA, the total charge, so Q total, is equal to 22 pi k. Now, what is the electric field right outside the sphere? Now, the, the equation for the electric field, the magnitude, is equal to k times the charge divided by the distance squared. All right, so in this case, k would be 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Q is now going to be 22, 22 pi k. And r squared, well, the radius r squared is now three, uh, 5 over 2, so it would be 25 over 4. And that's so we put the 4 in the numerator. The 4s again cancels out. The pi cancels out. So I end up with 22k over 25 epsilon sub naught. Is that the answer we got over there? No, they claim it should be 13 pi k over epsilon sub naught. So, we don't have the right answer, so D is not part of the answer. So only B is the correct answer out of the four. So quickly check this again, KQ over R squared. K is one over four pi epsilon sub naught. Q is 22 pi K, and R squared, that would be the radius squared, that would be 25 over 4, but in the denominator, so 25 in the denominator, 4 in the numerator. <coughs> Excuse me. So definitely not even close. That's not the right answer. And that is how it's done.